I just filmed the answers to three of these questions and my phone cut off because apparently my storage is full. So firstly, <laughs> this is the concert book tag started by as read by Brooke. I was tagged by Dane of Dane Reads and it's all to do with concerts and that sort of thing. I've never been to a concert before so I'm hoping that doesn't come up in these questions. But firstly, we have tickets. The most recent book you either brought or checked out from the library. That is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I believe there's something about a love of books in here and magic and mysticism and it's got a bee on the cover. Other than that, all I know is that I've been waiting for this book since 2012. I'm really looking forward to it and I'm going to read it in December. Next we have The Crowd, a bookish community that you love can be in real life or a book and for this I didn't go with booktube I went with my writers group that is a entire group of people of various experiences backgrounds and styles we all write different things coming together and supporting one another and that is exactly what a writer needs to further themselves as a writer they will other writers will kind of get you to experience different things and maybe get you to experiment with different styles of prose or poetry that you didn't think you'd ever work on before. Three, sing along, a book that you quote every time you get the chance. I don't quote books. I could not tell you a single book quote from any of the books that I've read this year, whether I've adored them or not. It's just not something I do. I could maybe tell you some quotes from my own books just because I've read them a few times. But there is one quote that sticks in my mind and it's from the very first time I read Nicholas Nickleby and that quote is The beauty of the earth is but a breath and man is but a shadow. Four, sold out. A book that you're really looking forward to but just haven't read yet. So most of the unread books on my shelves are from the last three months. I haven't really been buying many books and I'm trying this whole thing of when I buy them I read them so <laughs> the only book is a very recent edition and that is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller and I purchased this book when I was ill because it gave me Xena Warrior Princess vibes and I really wanted to watch Xena Warrior Princess and it wasn't available on Amazon. This book was featured in that vlog of footage that I deleted because I was just angry at Amazon in there but it follows this 18-year-old character of Rasmira who ends up an outcast from her tribe in this Viking-style country because of something that goes wrong in a bout where someone kind of betrays her, really. I don't know. Either way, she is given the task to go and kill this god who has been a bit mean to them over the last few decades. And will she do it? I'll probably try and read this in December too, so we'll soon see. The Band. A book slash book series you love that you wish everyone would read so you could fangirl about it together. And that is the Live Ship Traders trilogy by Robin Hobb. This is the question we got up to. And basically, this series has really strong female characters. And I mean strong in that this is the one series in which a character grows so much and went from being one of my most hated characters in fiction to one of my most beloved. I adore that character. I adore this series. It is, again, filled with allegory for things going on in the world today. There is talks of slavery and the patriarchy. And it is honestly this family saga with fantastical elements. And it talks about heritage and making our own way in the world in is a way that I just haven't seen in fantasy fiction before. And... I really wish more people would pick it up. I think they're intimidated by the size of these books, but it is definitely worth it. Then we have six, Encore. A book that you wish had a sequel or a book series that you wish had just one more book. I'm actually going to say The Great Coat series by Sebastian de Castell. And it's not that I want it to have one more book. I want it to have a lot more books because I really enjoyed those characters. And if Sebastian de Castell could capture the same feeling he has in those four books, and bring it into further adventures of those characters, then I would be thrilled because that is one of my favourite fantasy series. I could have probably picked up one of the books, but I'm just not that kind. Seven, opening act, a book that you weren't expecting to love as much as you did. And that is 
The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield that I read earlier this year. The reason I didn't think I'd like it, I tried reading it a few times and I felt as though the start of that book was incredibly dense and so I never got past the first page and then when I was at work one day I was reading the book at the till which I shouldn't probably have been doing but we had no customers in and I was just flying through it and I read that book over the weekend. I cannot really verbalise why I adore that book. It, bring, it blends all of the classical elements. I recorded an entire video about it. It was just great to see an author who clearly loves books and loves storytelling use that to tell a story about books and it had all these different merged narratives and it was just intertextual and fantastic. 8. Merch Table. One piece of bookish merch that you either own or want to own. Whilst I do own a bit of bookish merch about the place, you see, that map comes from the Witchland series by Susan Dennard, and I have a little Funko Pop of something to do with Harry Potter. I have various bits of memorabilia around me. I don't actually care for bookish merch. It's always what other people have bought me, and I'm just not that type of person. I don't like dust collectors. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I do have a Hufflepuff hat and a Hufflepuff scarf because my siblings got them for me and I'd feel mean not wearing them. Um, but otherwise, they have a use. They're not just going to be sat around my bedroom collecting dust and yeah. Nine. Concert Friend. A book that you bonded with someone over. And for me, as with many other people, it's Harry Potter. Specifically, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. When I was seven years old, no, when I was six, at school, in year three, they read us Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And I can't remember whether it was every day, but I definitely remember it being a Friday. And so I asked my mum for the book for my birthday. And it was around the same time as The Goblet of Fire came out. And we thought that this was just a bind up of the first three books because of how huge it was. And I didn't own any books. We, we were poor. We were a bit tiny, impoverished in all that. And so I didn't own any books. And then my mum bought me this. And I took it straight over to my grandparents' house. And my granddad took it off me and started reading it. And then he had this off me. I think I took it on the Sunday. He'd read it by the Thursday. Then my mum went out and she bought the first three books. And I didn't get to see them either. And bear in mind, these were my birthday presents. And he read the first three as well. And he ended up very much invested in the world. And we would chat about them. And obviously the first film came out the year before he died. And so it's one of those things where I always wonder how he'd have felt about the where the series went and all the stuff that keeps coming out that sh probably should have just stayed in the author's mind. But it's one of those things that makes me feel incredibly nostalgic is to look back at when I first got this book and got to share it with my granddad. So that one. And then we have ten. Tour Announcement, a book that you cannot wait to be released. I don't know whether it has a title yet, but I'm just going to look forward to anything by Joanna Cannon. I just really adore her writing, and she always reminds me of Alan Bennett, classic British stories, and she has a way of writing that seems delicate but is really impactful, and so whatever she writes next, whatever she's bringing out, I can't wait for it. Now I have to tag some people. And for this video, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to borrow from Dane and go through my recent comments and I will tag some people that way. And so, firstly, we're going with Book Seriously Man, then Emma of Emma Rose and Books, Rosie Ravenclaw, Jason's Weird Reads, Tia and all the books. Let's leave out Dane, considering he tagged me. Marissa Curtis. Doris of all the books. Well, no. Doris of all the books. Rachel of Rachel's Reading Corner. Okay, so a lot of you... Oh, Nicole of I Read Past My Bedtime. I just realised that I actually had it set to just comments I hadn't responded to. So I was wondering where all of you were. So I'm also going to be adding Kate Howe and Emily of Novel Novels. And I'll also go across 
and subscribe to the people who I've just tagged, who I've not subscribed to yet. Doing really well today. I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to put a pot of coffee on because I've been recording for an hour and I'm getting a bit tired of it. So, you know, adore you all and all that, but I'm off. So, if you've read any of these books and would like to discuss them, please feel free to do so. <laughs> do, do. Please feel free to do so in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed this video and until next time, that is all.